into the world of amazing, poisonous animals. Hi, Henry. Look who's here. Hey, these guys here for lunch? I'm a hungry lizard, and I'm gonna drain this cauldron. Be careful, Henry. It could be poisonous. Never eat anything if you don't know what it is. To a tree frog, a woodlouse might look delicious, but just watch. Yeah. Fortunately for the tree frog, the poison in the woodlouse only tastes bad. But that's not all poisons do. You see, Henry, animals use poisons in lots of different ways. Some to defend themselves, others to attack. What are you doing? Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. I am Newt and Tira Frog. It's okay to have fun, Henry, but never play with real poisons. If you ever see that yellow poison sign, be careful. I know. You're talking to a pretty smart lizard. Folk stories and fairy tales often featured magical poisons now thought to be just superstitions. But there is some truth to them. There is? Yes, for instance, long ago, some people used the natural poison extracted from the toad in their magic spells and potions. Wow! That toad's enough to send a shiver through any lizard's spine, even a smart lizard. Just behind each eye, the toad has a gland full of poison which he squeezes out whenever he feels threatened. People who wanted its poison used mirrors to trick it into thinking it was in danger. They believed the toad would think it was surrounded by enemies and release its defenses. Excuse me, whenever I think of poison, I think of snakes. And whenever I think of snakes, I think of snake charmers. Do I look charming? Yikes! I think you look like a great charmer, Henry. But I'm afraid this snake thinks you look like a great lunch. Some people have been so in awe of poisonous snakes that they made them into gods. So, if you worship a snake, maybe it won't bite you, huh? I don't know about that, but I do know you don't want to make it mad. The cobra is normally a shy animal. It uses its poison called venom for hunting. When an animal is bitten, it's paralyzed and can't move. Don't mess with these guys. Wow, is that a cobra too? No, this is a gaboon viper, and it has the longest fangs in the whole wide world. Excuse me, but that's amazing. Imagine brushing those. Are all snakes poisonous? No, most of them aren't. Of the 2,700 species of snake, only 400 are venomous. But the ones who are, are often deadly. Hey, that poor gecko guy is stiff as a stick. That's the venom at work. Snakes give me lizard goosebumps. Hey, what are these guys doing? Are they nuts? They're milking snakes. Excuse me, but I think I'll stick to cows and goats. If we have samples of the venom from all different kinds of snakes, scientists can make up an anti-venom to give to people if they're bitten. So they can use poison to cure poison. Amazing! That's exactly what they do. But since each snake has a different poison, lots of types of anti-venom need to be made for hospitals. Keep up the good work, guys. Believe it or not, this jewel wasp is using poison to raise her babies. That's amazing. What's she doing? First, she snips off the cockroach's antennae to confuse its senses. Ouch! That sure would confuse me. Then, while the cockroach is confused, the jewel wasp injects her special poison sting. Ouch! So different animals use poison in different ways. 
The wasp wants to lay her eggs on the cockroach and bury it alive so her eggs will have something to eat when they hatch. And that's how her poison helps her raise her babies. I'm glad I'm not a cockroach. Pretty frog. Can pretty things be poisonous too? Yes. Really? What's so deadly about him? Whoa! We're under attack! No, we're not, Henry. But that was a poison dart frog. A frog throws poison darts? Is that an Olympic sport? No. Indians in the Amazon use poison from the skin of these frogs on their hunting darts and arrows. The stuff is so strong, one drop of the poison could kill 100,000 mice. 100,000? With one drop? Amazing! But they're such lovely colors. Warning colors, Henry. Is that a tadpole on its back? Yes, it's a baby frog traveling on the back of this tiny strawberry poison dart frog. How come the poison in the frog's skin doesn't hurt baby? The baby is immune to it. It's only other animals who will die if they try to eat the frog. Some defense mechanism. Pretty final. Yes, Henry. Bright colors can be a pretty clear warning that the animal is poisonous, like this fire-bellied toad. Uh-oh, trouble! The toad's got it covered. Even though he's poisonous and has a beware color underneath, this time he thinks it's best to use his camouflaged back to fool the snake. Wow, it worked! The snake's gone right past him. Snakes don't have great eyesight, Henry. Warning colors do prevent a lot of trouble. See how this glass lizard leaves the fire salamander alone? It's got poison in its skin, and its bright colors warn the lizard away. Say, are they called fire salamander because they're hot? No. It's because they like to spend the winter sleeping in wood piles. When people put the logs on their fires, the salamanders would often be hiding inside the wood. They'd get out pretty quick, though, when the logs started to burn. Some people thought that the little salamanders were being born from the fire. That's how the name fire salamander came about. So they were hot from the fire. Yes, I suppose so. You were kind of right, too. So much to remember. Toads and frogs, wasps and snakes, warning colors and red for danger! That's a warning light, Henry. Oh. Better play it safe. Wow! Good thing you stopped. I think you've learned a thing or two about warning colors. Bright colors, take care. Gold and black. It could attack. Good little rhyme. You're right. Bright colors often do mean danger. Here's a quick test. Tell me, poisonous or not poisonous? Not poison. Wrong. Nor him. Wrong. Poison, I think. Right. Him too. Right. Poison for sure. Right. No, too cute. Wrong. No? Wrong. He's so ugly, he must be deadly. Right. Pretty good job, Henry. Believe it or not, though, they were all poisonous. Excuse me, but that's amazing. Wasps and bees. Now they can be dangerous, too. They can pack quite a sting, and their yellow and black colors warn other insects to leave them alone. But this harmless hoverfly isn't a wasp. It copies the wasp's colors to fool predators into thinking it's the real thing. What a sneaky copy wasp.
some animals who really aren't dangerous at all cheat and pretend to be more deadly than they are as a way of scaring off predators. Here's the coral snake. It's incredibly poisonous, with colored rings to match, black, white, and red. Now this is a coral snake mimic, a harmless milk snake. Its rings are red, yellow, and black. Which is the copycat snake, Henry? Can you tell the difference? Maybe. Um, let's see. Red, black, and white? Or is it white, black, and red? It's all very confusing. What do you think? Can you tell the difference? They look exactly the same to me. How would you like to bet your life on which is which? No way. Exactly. This is like a bad dream. Poisonous, not poisonous, I can't be sure. This copying is called mimicry, Henry. Mimicry? Well, I can't tell the difference. Neither can predators, so they leave them alone. That's what the mimic is counting on. Amazing! But do I need to clear my head? I'm glad it's time for the Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best poisonous animal! And it's a bronze third place medal for the Gila Monster, one of only two species of venomous lizard in the world, and I'm not the other. And a second place silver medal for the Scorpion, an aggressive little guy with a sting in its tail. And who gets the Golden Gecko? It goes to the Black Widow Spider because it's so deadly! Really? That's not much of a web. What can it catch in that? You'd be surprised. This sticky web can trap all sorts of much bigger creatures. Watch. Maybe even you can learn something. Remember our silver medalist, the scorpion? Here he is, snagged on a thread. He struggles, and when the web starts to vibrate, the black widow knows she's caught something. She rushes down to deliver her fatal bite. What about the scorpion's deadly sting or its crushing claws? Caught in the sticky web, it can't use them. Ouch! That's all it takes. One poisonous bite, then the scorpion never wakes up again. But don't worry, of the 35,000 species of spider, only 30 are dangerous. Does the black widow eat it later? What's the hurry? Who would dare to steal her food? What's that? What's what? That thing on your head. Don't go too close. That's a spitting cobra. It sprays its poison. I know that. I'm a clever lizard. I've come totally prepared. <laughs> With what? Yeah. Yes, it's my cobra umbrella. It's all the fashion this season, if you don't want an eye full of venom. Haven't you finished spraying yet? Thank you. The skunk sprays too, but from the other end. A small animal with a big smell. The skunk uses its own form of chemical warfare to beat a much bigger predator. The skunk versus the puma. And it's a left. Wow! But the skunk starts to fight back. Float like a butterfly, stink like a skunk. This skunk spray is a real knockout. How do you like that? Ya big bully! And he's down for the count. The winner! I'm taking no chances. I learned fast. I bet that puma wished he'd had a gas mask, Henry. Do you know something? Even in this, it still smells as if he's right nearby. Uh-oh, he is! Run! <laughs> I'm on your side.
Henry, it's time for your special report. Henry, time for your report. Come here. You are ready, aren't you? No. We're waiting for your report on the rattlesnake. You are prepared, aren't you? Sure. I'm going to explain why a rattlesnake, uh, rattles. Really? That's rattle, not cattle. No, no, the other sort of rattle, the kind you find on snakes. Yeah. Hey, you know, snakes are cold-blooded, so they have to do what they can to heat up. Uh-huh. But they can't keep warm by running on the spot. They've got no feet. And they can't wear mittens. Because snakes don't have hands. Life gets pretty boring when you have to sit still to save all your energy. Most of the time, they just sleep under rocks. All except for the rattlesnake. He likes to party. What? Henry? From dusk till dawn. But nobody else would dance with him. Because they were all asleep. So the rattlesnake used a baby's rattle, tied to its tail, and shook hard. The noise woke up all the other snakes so that they could join in the party, where they danced and ate lots of jelly roll. And that's why the rattlesnake rattles. Because it parties. It likes to snake, rattle, and roll. And don't forget, you heard it straight from the lizard's mouth. Well, Henry... The fact is, no one knows for certain why a rattlesnake has a rattle on the end of its tail. Probably it's to distract the attention of his prey to one end of him while the other end does the biting. Also, the noise warns other animals and people to stay away. What a cute little mouse. A kangaroo rat, actually. They live in the deserts of America. Where the rattlesnakes live? I'm going to have to close my eyes, right? Maybe not. The rattlesnake is very fast. It can strike its prey in one quarter of a second. Amazing! But the kangaroo rat has some of the quickest reactions in the animal world. No way is that rattlesnake going to miss. The kangaroo rat gets a rattly early warning. Look out! Yes! He missed. The rat's okay. Good. I'm an amphitheater. I can live in water or air. That's amphibian, Henry. And I know what that is. It's a fruit-flavored jellyfish. Real jellyfish aren't so nice to bump into, Henry. In fact, some of the most poisonous creatures around are under the sea. This looks like something from a bad dream after eating too many pickled onions. Look at those tentacombulations! That's tentacles, Henry. Sometimes they're as long as a bus, almost as long as your strange word. And they all have poisonous stinging cells. It's a nightmare! Hey, how come the crab isn't being stung? He's got a hard shell, unlike this fish. He's got to be crazy. Doesn't he know those tentacles are trouble? Well, he's about to find out. The stingers will paralyze and kill small fish. Then they're drawn into the jellyfish and eaten. They're beautiful, but deadly. Jellyfish, look, but don't touch. Now that ain't beautiful. It's a mess. This anemone on a coral reef is about to receive an unwelcome visitor. It's a sea slug called a Spanish dancer, and it likes to feed off the stinging tentacles of the anemone, and then it can use the anemone's poison to add to its own tentacles to protect itself. So it's stealing the other animal's weapons. Smart. But the anemone is not going to give up its poison without a fight. Hey! The anemone's grabbed it! And it's grabbed the anemone. So it's a tug of war. Which the Spanish dancer wins in the end.
Excuse me, but that's an amazing pair of maracas. Hey, little fish, beat it, get away. He's okay, Henry. This clownfish has a special layer of mucus on its skin that stops the anemone stingers from firing. And while he's hanging out with the anemone, he's protected from other predators by the same tentacles. Careful where you step, Henry. There's a sting in the end of this tail. I think I'm starting to get the picture. And what a picture. I feel claustrophobic, surrounded by all these stings. Let's look at these scorpions. I'd rather not. Those stings look like they could knock a lizard off its perch. Scorpions don't only rely on their sting. They've got strong claws, too, which they use for hunting. And sometimes the male and female seem to hold hands with their claws as they do a special courtship dance. Well, I'm not about to cut in. They have to be careful, though. Not to step on each other's toes as they waltz. Not to sting each other. Scorpions aren't immune to other scorpions' poison. Hey, things could really get out of hand. Or should I say out of claw if they have an argument on the dance floor? The last waltz. Thank you, and good night. Period. Some animals are immune, or at least partially immune, to the scorpion's sting. Here's the meerkat. He sees the scorpion and decides it's food. Look how he bites off the sting before making a meal out of the rest of the creature. There's got to be a safer way to get lunch. So, now do you think you know something about poisonous animals? You mean, apart from staying away from them? Yes, I've learned there are lots of different types of poison which some creatures use for hunting and to defend themselves. But if we leave them in peace, they'll normally stay out of our way and leave us in peace too. Well done, Henry. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs>